Kai te mihi mato inaine, ki tō mato rangatirara atawhai tipo. E te tohunga, hare mai, nau mai, piki mai, hikurangi maunga, tau pō nui atia, me te motu rongo nui o kapiti hare mai. Atifai is well known for being one of those special leaders whose actions reflect his own name, Atifai, meaning care, concern, respect, Afina assistance, and leadership for all peoples across many sectors of government in our Aotearoa New Zealand today. Afio mai lawa fionga, Atifai Tibbles. Are mai, me a mai, a feel mai, susu mai. Join me in warmly welcoming after five people. Ah, uh, kiro tato. Ah, uh, kai ngā mana, kai ngā reo, kai ngā karanga tanga mahati na kuto te na kuto. Ah, uh, waikato tai nui hauraki o tira na iwi huhua e noho mana fenoa nei te nei hau e mihi nei kuto. O tira tata katoa ko hui nei e pai nei, tāngata Pacifica, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, huri rauna, kia ro tātou. Um, that's a really awesome but a tough act to follow, eh? <laughs> um, I think uh, Monique uh, does justice in terms of uh, providing us all with a framework, in terms of our organisations thinking seriously about how we include, um, and not just include, how we uh, engage, connect, and work with uh, those of our communities who may not be well represented in the library service. So please, wamaita paki paki, because I think all those things that Monique talked about, and from workforce to um, innovation to uh, having a go, those are really, really important things. And if I can do anything, I'm going to move from strategy down to the ground and talk about people. Uh, so, hea te me nui, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. Uh, before I go on, I should say this. Um, uh, talofa, maloni, maloelele, kia orana, ko nga Māori, ni sabula, whakalofa lahiatu, talofa lava, and cheers, everybody. Isn't this amazing? Um, it's an honour and a privilege to be here. Uh, this is what I'm going to talk about. Um, I'll talk a little bit about myself in terms of what I do and why you might think I'm interesting. Um, ultimately, I want to talk about how we connect better, how we connect better as people. Because I think uh, one of the challenges we have, strategies are fine. Ultimately, we have to connect at a personal level. We have to. Uh, with our communities, with people who come through the door of our libraries, we have to connect with them. We have to find ways to do that. So that's what I want to talk about. What do I do? Um, I see myself as a translator, as a bridge builder, as a guide. But I was thinking as Monique was talking, actually all of us who work in this space, who are from um, uh, minority communities, we're all bridge builders. We're all translators. We're all guides. And actually, if I could say one thing, we need you all, who are not us, to cross the bridge. You need to be brave, you need to be courageous. And we're going to reach our hand out. But you have to grab our hand and just trust and believe. Okay? So what I'm going to do is go through what I'll call some concrete examples about what I mean by this. Uh, so first of all, we're going to do Hongi 101, Atafai style. And uh, this is my rule that I teach my people at my work. Hand, land, breathe, stand. Okay? So first of all, you've got to know the why. And uh, why is culture, why is meaning, why is story? And for our peoples, story is really important. So it goes back to Hine Ahuone, who was the first woman, who was fashioned by Tane, and when he gave life to her, he breathed life through her nose. Okay? So the first breath of life, life came from the nose. Okay, so when we hungi, we are really passing breath, acknowledging uh, that very, very first contact, that space, connecting, the relationship between. And it's tapu and it is sacred. Um, although having said that, I see a lot of my uh, son's friends, they do a bit of a bro hongi, 
where you know you get the hand like that and you go in and yeah, they do all this stuff. Um, I saw Aaron Smith and uh, TJ Pedernata do it when um, they were changing of the guard in the game on uh, Saturday night, and it did make me think how much things have changed since I was a young fella. And uh, when our mother and father would do that at the Marae, but we wouldn't see it much in many other places. So I'm going to teach you all how to do the hongi, okay? So I just want you to understand this. This is how it goes. Everybody stand up, please. So this is the how. You know the why. Okay, so I want you to reach the person next to you, okay? You're going to reach your hand out. So hand is like you're shaking a hand. So just touch hands. Okay, hand. Okay, everybody shh. So that's hand. Now landers, I want you to land the tip of your nose on their nose. Wait, wait, wait. And because you're beginners, please keep your eyes open. Okay? So we'll just do a practice. Just go in, eyes open, and touch the tip, and then come back out, okay? Go. Okay, did you do that? Cool. So what I want you to do now is, I want you to do that again. I want you to touch the tip. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to breathe in. Okay? Okay, then pull out. And then I want you to stand and look at the other person. Nod. And then turn around and do it to the, guy next, the person next to you. Okay? Hand, land, breathe, stand. Hand, land, breathe, stand. Okay, everybody who got that, put their hands up. Have you got that? Okay, if you got that, sit down and all the rest can stay standing. <laughs> now, there are variations of the hungi. Okay, and sometimes it's the nose and the forehead are touching. So when I've heard uh, Nader up here, Nader Glavish, and her thing to me was, when the forehead touches, uh, we are remembering those who have passed away. And when the noses touch, we are passing the breath of life of the living. So one's for the living, one's for those who have passed away. And you can see, it's not just a how, it's a why. Eh? And the why is full of meaning. It oozes meaning, it drips it. And that meaning is really, really special and really, really powerful. And it's probably true that uh, when young boys and young girls do it, maybe they're not that. It's more perfunctory. It's just a thing they do. But as you know, the older we get, the more the meaning becomes important. And these are the stories we pass on to our children, to our grandchildren. So everybody, now you know how to do the hungi, hungi 101. Everybody repeat after me. Hand, Hand. land, land. Breathe. breathe, stand. 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 Okay, I'm going to give you a clap. Awesome. Now, I think that's a good example of sometimes this is what we need to do as translators to help people connect and understand. I could have given you a long lecture. You might have fallen asleep like I did when I was, at, when I was like that. Um, but sometimes what we need to do is we need to make things easy. But this is the trick to all this. When we do do this and we make this easy and we try to help you, please remember that we do this to remember our people to remember our ancestors, and to make this easy for you to participate. Okay? That's what it's all about. Um, I don't mind the humour and the jokes because I'm one of those types of people. Um, and I, hopefully that gets the message across to you. But the real point is, you know, we're trying to pass this stuff on uh, so that it's done properly. And this is what I'm doing in the public sector um, across a range of agencies in terms of helping organisations. That's just a little bit of it in terms of maintaining their relationship as a crown partner, working with Māori and with iwi. So this is what I do. Um, that was a meeting at the top there in terms of that's chief, or the former chief judge, Eddie Jury, um, New Zealand Māori Council, uh, having a hui, uh, talking about a particular kopa that I'm working on. Um, when I was at Stats New Zealand, I did the Kupinga survey, 2013, which was a measurement of Māori cultural wellbeing. So the same thing, I think, as Monique in terms of adding the science and the culture and the lived experience of our people and trying to weave those things together, okay? Um, and then I worked at Treasury, did some work on the Living Standards Framework. That actually was very, very hard. 
And I'll tell you why, because economists have their own way of thinking and they don't budge. So um, I left there knowing that um, that was a particular type of organisation that was looking for like an add-on browning up um, the Living Standards Framework. With respect, I know they tried their best, but the problem was they, they were not they were not partnery enough. That's how I say it. They didn't really want to come halfway. And probably that is to do with that particular form of learning and of knowledge and of science. So it was very, really, really tough there. But good people. Um, there's a picture in there of Gifted and Brown. Uh, King Kapisi, uh, Mara Finau, Ian Sumanu, George uh, Gerard Tahu passed away, and that's me with the baseball cap, uh, looking much slimmer. Um, that's part of my connection to Pacific people. Uh, Gifted and Brown was in the time of um, um, Hal Bazaar of Pule Fui Mana. You know, we, we were more of a lesser known band, but we were pioneering uh, hip hop and Māori and Pacifica music with, with uh, black American music. Those were good times. Up the top, uh, that's me and culture. I went to the um, to Māori exhibition in uh, Chicago with Peter Sharples and a number of people. Chad Brown there, looking very skinny like I was. That's 20 stone ago. Um, <laughs> but that's Rua Te Pupake. Um, I graduated with a law degree from Victoria University. So not dissimilar from Monique and others in this room today. Um, you know, our parents had dreams and aspirations for us. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a millionaire lawyer. And my father's quite disappointed, as I'm going to be honest. And, and these are the things we have to face up to uh, disappointed parents when we uh, don't fulfill their dreams, but we fulfill ours. Um, just a little bit about me. This is my whanau. Uh, this is our marae. Um, these are my brothers and sisters. One of my brothers passed away. My father was a policeman. Uh, my father was a cop at Bastion Point. Yeah. I remember him leaving to do jobs like that. Being a policeman was one of the few jobs that could pay. There are 10 in our family. So it was pretty tough. Um, here's the good news. Um, my brother Tiwana was the CEO at Ngāti Whātua who took them from 30 million to 800 million in asset value. And we felt proud that our family was able to repay in a small sense, perhaps, the, uh, the not-so-positive thing that my father was involved in as a police officer. But uh, that's my whānau. That's the marae, that's where we're from. This is my, this is my wife and my kids, uh, the reason I do what I do now. Um, and my wife is a good Canterbury Pākehā girl uh, from Rangiora. <laughs> uh, the good news is that she's a Hurricanes fan now. <laughs> hey. Uh, now both eyes are working. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you, I mean you, you all know, you know, we, we do things for whānau, we do things for family, and my children, they're the product of us. So, you know, in, in terms of what Monique's talking about, in terms of, you know, the, the best of all worlds, this is what we're about, how we flip the script. I'm trying to flip the script every day with these kids, mate, I tell you. <laughs> so not long ago, I um, had a meeting with Penny Hinari, who I work for, um, and we were talking a few things, we were bouncing ideas across in terms of how we connect with people on the ground. And, you know, a few things were said. And I said something like, um, uh, this is the first of a thousand cups of teas. And he goes, oh, yeah, don't forget to bring a koha. And I said, yeah, and don't leave early, don't take the first plane out. And we bounced back and forth these ideas. I wrote some of these ideas up on LinkedIn. Got about 20,000 views. And a whole lot of Māori and other people shared the universality of the underpinning themes in terms of uh, how important it is to connect with people. Because while we say these things in different ways, in different forms, like I love the thing that Monique said about, um, you know, tr uh, is it time and trust, you know? You know, we travel, we can only travel as, you know, as fast as trust. I mean, that, that stuff is gold. And that's not just Pacifica, that, that's universal, eh? That's universal. And a lot of the stuff is relational. I think in the world we live in, we've become very transactional. And I mean, we do it for a reason and we do it for a purpose, okay? I get that. But the truth is, uh, the more and more complicated things get, the more simple things become, right? And the more we realize actually, yeah, we do need the computers, but we need the computers and the people, yeah? So that's what I want to talk a little bit about. Some of the tips and hints 
that I have learned through my life with my parents. And I think I'll summarise them at the end, uh, that these things are not to, even though they have a Māori lens to it, they are universal themes. They're universal themes. So the first one, Thousand Cups of Tea. Um, you would have all heard the saying, you know, too much hui, not enough doi. And the truth is, we must hui before we doi. I mean, we're the type of people where, yeah, uh, we can only go as fast as the trust that exists between the people there. Eh? Um, it's not going to happen any faster. So a thousand cups of tea is really a metaphor for anything good that happens between people typically takes time. Typically takes time. And I think it would be fair to say the more that there is mistrust between the parties, the longer that time is. Alternatively, some people just like to have a cup of tea. Okay? Some people like a cup of tea. But I mean, this is really, really important. And it's a thing when you engage with Māori people. When you engage with Māori in general, people aren't necessarily that trusting. They don't trust institutions. I mean, I'm an advisor for the government. So I'm telling government all the time, and ministers all the time, it's always going to take longer than you think. Because it's all about relationships, yeah? It's all about relationships. Mihi before the mahi. I mean, what I love about when I work with our Pacifica brothers and sisters uh, in terms of praise to God and remembering the importance of those things, those aspects, uh, we are very, very formal when we engage. Yeah, we can have a cup of tea and a chit-chat, but when we have the proper, proper meeting, we do things properly. And the mihi, the greeting, the ceremony, that always happens before we get into the business. And I do have to remind my Pākehā friends, I'm on the Wellington City Mission, on the board there, and um, in the weekend we had a meeting, and uh, these people who were looking after this transition housing for us, this Māori group came in, and uh, our chairperson had to leave and said, oh, can you just go to the top of the table and just start your speech, because I've got to go. And uh, the person said, oh, no, 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 I've got to meet everybody first. And him and his uh, group went around the whole room, hungi, kiss, said hello, because that's how we do Okay, that's how we do. So just remember, we always do the mihi before the mahi. Well, you know, there are processes that we have when we connect that we actually have to do. Otherwise, we can't really meet. Um, and, and it would be fair to say we are formal, eh? We are formal. Um, our, our protocols are, are formal. You can get degrees of formality, obviously on a marae, very, very formal. You know, in a church setting, very, very formal. But actually... In small rooms, we still have smaller versions of that, of the whakatau, you know, as opposed to the pōwhiri. But really, really important, do the mihi before the mahi. Hongi and Kiswa, you know that we go personal before we go transactional. You know, communal, personal, then transactional. You know, we want to know who you are. We want to, you know, we want to share. We want to close that space, and we want to share our breath, and we want to share our memories of our old people. These are the things that we do. And uh, you can see there some famous people doing a hungi. The kiss thing, that's more of a modern day thing. And you'll see a lot of our, like a lot of, when I was growing up, my grandmothers were more likely to kiss me, but it probably was the, the, the relationship that we had, you know. Come here, you big kiss. Slobbery kisses. Ooh. But hey, that's how, those are our nannies, eh? Those are our grandmothers. That's how it works. But hungi and kiss, I think this is just another reminder to people, you know that we do have this kind of, uh, we have these processes, we have these ways of connecting that are really, really important to us. And so I taught you how to do the Hongi 101, and those things will be important. I will say this, uh, sometimes it gets a bit awkward because sometimes if you're, if you're new to a person and you might go into do a Hongi, they might go, oh, what's this Pākehā doing? What do we, <laughs> I don't know them. Uh, this happens. Um, but, you know, in general, this is how we connect. Always leave a koha. Uh, so a koha is normally a gift, eh? So when you're at the marae and you say a speech or something, you know, you lay down an envelope and that might be uh, some funding or, or a thought for the gathering that you're at. But what this also means is bring your value. Hey, when you go to a meeting and you're going to meet people, bring the best of you. Bring that value. Bring that relationship. You leave that behind, Yeah. Don't just go there and take. Don't just go there to say, oh, I'm here to do this and I want that. Not that you'd say that, but you may plan that. Yeah? Always leave a koha. 
You know, make sure the relationship is better uh, when you leave than when you turned up. Okay? The who many, not how many. Uh, when Minister Henari came to this meeting, we'd invited 20 people. Half of those people on that photo are officials from my office. Um, and we were worried. The good news was the man in the middle uh, turned up and everything was fine because that person represented hundreds of people and years of memories and our ancestors, people that he had met with or taken notes of Peter Hurunui Jones or Suapida Nangata, famous people. And the wisdom that he brought to this meeting was just amazing. So uh, I'm going to give you an example. We were talking about data. And because uh, at the Social Investment Agency, data is quite an important thing in terms of information. But we were talking about Māori data sovereignty, which is a key issue. And um, we were talking about, um, you know, is, is, is uh, data a taonga? You know, is it a, is it a gift from the ancestors? Is it a, a special and precious thing that should be looked after um, and really cared for? Or is it this thing you just you know, tweet around or throw around and nobody cares. And uh, Tai Hakure or Eddie Jury said, uh, I, I don't know too much about computers because I can't even open mine. But he said, uh, but I was at the, uh, taking notes for the famous Ngāti Maniopoto uh, elder, Peter Hurunui Jones, back in the 60s. And Pei Jones talked about the time when he uh, was visited upon by all the elders because he had committed to a book, the Whakapapa or the genealogy of Ngāti Maniopoto. And um, all these elders were very, very concerned. And they said, you should not put that stuff in that book because that stuff is sacred and it should not be in that book. Why are you doing this? And Pai Jones said, um, I'm doing this for our children and for my children's children and for my children's children's children. So he was thinking intergenerationally, which is a very typical way that our elders act. Um, he basically was saying that um, this is the only way that I can guarantee that our knowledge will be passed down. I'm not saying that they <coughs> sorted that out between themselves, but it's that type of knowledge and that type of mana that uh, Tai Haku they brought to our hui. Very small meeting, but it wasn't about it. <coughs> Excuse me. How many people turned up to the meeting? It was the who many, not the how many. So this is the thing I think we also have to think about in terms of when we meet with Māori or Pacifica people, who are our connectors? Hey, who knows the community? Um, these things we won't find in a contact list, or well, not in yours. Uh, they'll be in some of your contact lists, but you need to engage those right people to make sure that the right people are coming to meet with you if you're thinking about plans like this. Make sure you employ or engage with the right people. Oh, be good manuhiri. Oh, this is a good one. Um, you know, when we go to places, we're visitors, eh? We're visitors. Um, let's say we're going off-site, you know, and we're going to visit some people, uh, but we're just going to make sure we, you know, we act in the right way, you know, that we don't leave early. So one of the things I always say to my people from... Uh, the place that I work, please don't take the uh, three o'clock flight out if you've only turned up at 12, you know? Delay it by a night or come earlier because it's not good enough that all the people want to come and meet you and then you go, oh, I've got to go because my plane said four o'clock, so we'll see you later. Uh, that may be efficient, but it's highly rude to all the people in the community who may have turned up to see you. Um, these, some of these things may seem really common sense to you, but they actually happen a lot. And they're the types of things that uh, we as Māori people, I'm sure community people, Pacifica people, will be highly embarrassed if our friends, um, you know, don't, play, don't pay the uh, correct uh, respect to the people who've, you know, who've come to see you or have welcomed you. So being a good manuhiri really means, you know, when you go and visit somewhere, you know, make sure you open your ears. Um, don't go there with preconceived ideas. Go there to listen, you know. Bring your empathy with you. Be a good manuhiri. So manuhiri means visitor. Oh, this is a new word. Tea tell tanga. 
This comes from my cousin Wayne Nutter. So I was uh, I was part of a, a, a group for the State Services Commission looking at Māori leadership models and trying to promote these models to uh, CEOs within government. And um, we had all the best and smartest advice from um, the Harvards, Stanfords, all these clever people, HR, best practice in the world. And Wayne Nutter, who comes from a place called Tolaga Bay, uh, Uawa, north of Gisborne, says, what about tea tautanga? And our parking manager goes, what do you mean by that? And Wayne goes, you know, just because you've got a fancy title and uh, you turn up with the best suit, that doesn't mean you can't go to the back and do the dishes. <laughs> and, you know, some of those things are just really, really wise, eh? They're very, very wise. And they can only come from people who come from the heart of the community. And what are they, you know, it's just a, a, a simple and plain reminder to us all. Now, here's the truth. When you do go somewhere, if you're brand new, they're not going to expect you to do the dishes. In fact, if you try to do the dishes, they could be highly embarrassed. Okay? So make the most of being a good manuhiri on day one. Make the most of it. That's right. Day two. There we go. Down the front there. <laughs> that lady gets a fries. Uh, day two, you're not manuhiri, mate. So you'll be in the back. Um, and people like that, eh? Because, uh, you know, it's the front. We talk about the front and the back of the marae. That's what makes the marae. Not just the pai pai, not just the flash people, panikiritangas, or other fight heroes standing up with their tokotokos and their flash hats doing these amazing speeches. You know, all of them had to graduate to get there to where they were, and it all come from in the back. Actually, that's not totally true. I know some places where, uh, you know, there's a queue to be in the kitchen. That's how important that role is. But the main thing is, eh, te tau tanga. Let's not forget who we are. Our, you know, have some humility, and as much as possible, grab a detail and do the dishes. Oh, um, actually, this is my feed forward. I, there are heaps of other lessons, okay? There are many, many lessons in terms of um, things that I've learned along the way from my father, from my uncles, from nannies, from people that I've uh, just observed. Um, I mean, what I've heard today from Monique, in terms of time and trust, you know, it's an amazing corridor. And they all come from communities. They all come from plain folk. Mums and dads, nannies and kōros. And this is the thing. I'll close off with this. When I presented these, uh, just these little tidbits, these little nuggets of advice to my workplace, one of the women put her hand up. Uh, she was a woman from Kandala. And she said, Atafai. Everything you've said, uh, even though there's a Māori lens to it, I know all those things. I said, how come? She said, Atafai, when I grew up, we called those good manners. My mother taught me those things. And then I said, so what else? And she goes, here's what else. I wonder what happened. Why did we forget these things? Was it efficiency? Was it a chase to uh, decrease costs and be as effective as possible? I don't know what it was. But she sat there and paused and gave pause to the whole group of us sitting in my workplace, thinking about how do we bring these values back? Because for as Māori as they are, they are also universal. This thing, he nui, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata, that's not just a Māori thing. That's a people thing. We thank you for that engaging address that supports and affirms the directions we all seek to uh, achieve and that challenges us all to be much more culturally and linguistically aware and active in our day-to-day -day work. The 101 Hongi was awesome and all the principles and values that uh, you said, it's good for Māori and Pacific, it's good universally for all of us. So, ngā whawhetai tele, lawa fiona, uh, mei taki.
Ma'ata. And now we have something to thank you with. Thank you.